Um, so, all right. So Chris Lumley says, I've been dealing with excessive saliva and occasional drooling for approximately six months. The neurologist found nothing. I recently led, read that spike proteins have been found in salivary glands causing irritation and inflammation. This is a great question. I love this. I mean, this is something I was thinking about yesterday. Should I be taking something different to remove spike protein in these glands? All the supplements, ivermectin, et cetera, are apparently not helping. Suggestions. Okay, <laughs> so this is so important because what's probably happening with the excessive saliva and, you know, is that your salivary glands themselves are getting rid of the spike protein, okay? It's coming out in the saliva. Like anytime something is leaving your body in large quantities, you got to, the first thing you, sh you should think is I'm detoxing. My body is detoxing me for myself. Like it's doing it for me. When you see inflammation, it should be my, my, my immune system is there fighting something on my behalf. You shouldn't just slap some anti-inflammatories on that area or in your mouth and uh, try to stop your immune system from fighting. It's like if somebody had invaded the United States and we, you know, the Air Force and Navy and Army, everyone goes after them and we slap restraining orders on all of, you know, all of them so that they don't go and fight the enemy because we don't want them to blow up, you know, the town that the enemy's hiding in. Um, you got to like, you know, you got to let the Army and the Navy and the Air Force do its thing. And you should, uh, again, it, you know, so I think that if people have this perspective, they'll be able to put up with, you know, this irritation and stuff. Because if you stop it, if you just keep going down the list of things like the ivermectin, these supplements and stuff, they're probably helping, right? Because unless you take something that interferes with the process of detoxing the spike protein, you know, taking those things that help you to detox should either not stand in the way of this, you know, excessive saliva, or, you know, it's possible that you could find something that would be so powerful as a detoxer that it would like take care of all the problem overnight, boom, all the spike protein's gone, it got flushed out of your urine, and now your, gland, your salivary glands don't have to do anything more. I think that's what people want, and yet that's not usually how it works. So if something is stuck in a specific place, like right here in your mouth, in your salivary glands, um, the easiest way for your salivary glands to detox something is to just create saliva and you spit it out, right? Or swallow it and, you know, put it into the toilet. Um, the easiest way is not for, you know, like EGCG to come in and kick the spike protein off the receptor and natokinase and syrup peptase to chop it up and, uh, and then the blood to carry it to the kidneys and the kidneys to process it into the urine and you to urinate it out. Um, that's not the most direct avenue out of the salivary glands. The most direct avenue out is the saliva. So anyway, I, I see this a lot where I say, oh my God, my eyes are all inflamed. You know, what do I do to stop it, to get rid of that problem? You got to stop focusing. You actually got to start realizing that the symptom is the solution. Okay. Maybe that's a nice little catchphrase for it. The symptom is the solution, right? So um, you want to titrate it so that the symptom doesn't get so bad that like it ends up doing like, you know, a lot of damage to the area, which it usually doesn't <laughs> unless you do the wrong thing. You know, it's usually the body is able to titrate the response properly. Um, but yeah, trying to like stop the symptom is not the right approach. So, <clears throat> you know, some people would have been sick and have like loss of taste and smell and whatever and have poor digestion. And then they trigger, finally they trigger the detox and then they get the excessive saliva. That's their detox, right? So, you know, usually your body is there already doing the thing it needs to do and you're stopping it from doing that, right? So like I just recently talked to somebody who, you know, super healthy, right? Their whole lives, um, middle-aged, you know, late middle age, I guess, depending on what you define as middle age, um, and never, you know, do anything unnatural. And then, you know, they get so concerned over the last three, four years of all this COVID fear porn and everything, and they they get COVID and, and they're not getting better. It's coughing a lot. And they're like, maybe I should take one of those antibiotics I have in my cupboard, my medicine cabinet. And this was a mistake, okay? It wiped out the healthy bacteria that are part of your immune system and it set them up with long COVID. I mean, it's basically months and months later and they're still not better if they had just let it go, right? Like, um, even if you have pneumonia, it's, I, I really don't think almost anyone needs to treat 
almost anything with an antibiotic. It's very, very rare. It's less than 1% of the time. And I know this because I've, I've been in like urgent care telemedicine and urgent care situations. And um, <clears throat> so anyway, I mean, like obviously people who show up at a hospital, if they're, you know, desaturating and they're, you know, um, it's kind of hard to argue that they don't need, you know, drastic measures, but most people um, who are short of hospitalization, I mean, honestly, I think even people who are hospitalized, they, a lot of them probably don't need it. And, you know, a lot of people get hospitalized just because the hospital needs to fill their beds. And somebody gets hospitalized um, in the summer, you know, many of the people hospitalized in the summer during the slow days wouldn't be hospitalized in the winter during the busy, busy days because there would be a bunch of really sick people who really needed the beds and other people would just be sent home who don't really need the beds. So I've worked in hospitals, this is the way it works. All right, you gotta understand how it actually works on the inside. You should understand how dentistry works and that a, a lot of like fillings are just BS fillings. You know, it's just like the dentist is like, can I imagine a cavity there? Yeah, I think it, I think you need a filling, you know? <laughs> and, um, uh, and you know, there might be some people that are even worse than that, that aren't just uh, forcing themselves to imagine a cavity, but uh, are actually just lying to you. and putting a filling in your tooth just to make some money. Um, so anyway, uh, I think the, the, the approach should basically be as hands off as possible, let the body do its thing. Um, and most people's problems come from fiddling around with things we don't understand and they've interfered with the body trying to take care of the problem over and over again until it becomes a chronic problem. And the, because the problem got so deep rooted because you kept stopping the army, air force and navy from taking the problem out, it just came to grow within the country and get more and more deep rooted and spread its tendrils into more and more places. Uh, so the problem just gets more and more fixed into your tissues and then the body finally works up the energy and vitality to fight it off again and try to throw it out and and that looks like an illness to you and so you stop it again you just come and tamp it all back down and like stop 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 fighting you know um so it's a big big misunderstanding <laughs> that's, that's the main thing this is like the last describes the last hundred years at least of medicine is just like not understanding what's actually happening and interfering with it and leading to far worse problems later on uh, including autoimmune disease you know which is basically i mean one way of perhaps looking at it or one of the things that it might be is just deeply rooted problems that your body has tried to kick out of cells and has not been allowed to so you know, it's attacking cells that are infected or infested or, you know, are harboring toxins or something. And again, we're trying to stop it from doing that. Uh, so, you know, real healing is usually going to involve some sort of discomfort. And you just got to understand that the discomfort is going to be short lived if you can, you know, support it and allow it to happen. And, and then you'll, you'll be over it and you'll actually be healthy again. Um, so again, I mean, it's, it's possible if you just let it go, um, that eventually it will stop. But if you try to force it to stop, it may never stop. Right. So it could turn into just like a dysfunctional, you know, chronic problem, or you can just put up with it for a month or two months or three months or six months. I don't know. And eventually it'll stop on its own. Right. The body will have gotten rid of what it needed to get rid of and it'll be done. Um, and along the way, I mean, there are probably some things you can do to, to help it. You know, maybe you can try some, uh, mouth rinses, like you can do some oil pulling, put some, uh, coconut oil in there and just swish it around for 20 minutes, you know, morning and night. And, um, maybe you can try, uh, ozonated oil if you want, that might be even more helpful. So you can get, uh, you can try chlorine dioxide as well, like maybe 10, 15 drops as a mouthwash. Um, so like in water, mix it in some water and just like rinse it around into your mouth. Uh, so there's different things you can do that might be able to help. Um, this is just off the top of my head. So um, again, it's best to talk to somebody in depth about your problem. So because I might be missing something, you know, th these like few sentences that you've mentioned in your question, um, you know, there might be some other specific detail that would change my recommendations entirely. I, I might say, oh, this is actually some other problem. It's not a detox reaction, it's something else, you know, so. Um, but that's my guess. 
right? So, so that's one possible reality uh, based on this um, little scenario.